Perfect. Good evening. I'd like to thank everybody for coming. I'm Mark Purton, executive editor of Engadget. I'm Sarah Silbert, senior editor of Engadget. And I'd like to welcome everybody to our first Best of CES Awards. Um, it's been a, been a long and interesting week. Yeah, I think we're all tired, but Mark, more than anyone else. It's been <laughs> yeah, a lot of fighting late at night in trailers, <laughs> in the A trailer, the one trailer, <laughs> the Engadget right, one. Yeah. Basically, Engadget's editors have spent the past week or month or year, however long it's been, going through thousands of products here at CES, taking notes, gathering information, meeting with the companies behind them, testing them out, doing hands-ons, and then going back to our trailer to argue with each other. Yeah, I would say, do you think it's accurate to say that this CES was more exciting than last? Yeah. I think that it's been especially challenging. We just had so much and so much diverse stuff to deal with, to look through. So it's been rewarding, but challenging for sure. Absolutely, it's, it's definitely been rewarding. I think we've gotten to see a lot of exciting and interesting products and really put them through their paces. And I, I think, you know, some of us may never speak to each other again based on sort of disagreements over what should win here tonight. But in the end, I think we've really chosen the best of the best products that we have seen here at CES. And we're very excited to share our winners with you this evening. All right, should we get right to it? Let's, let's do it. All right, we're starting with startups. And we're looking for in startups both something that's very unique and innovative, but also something that can come to market that's not a very Con conceptual type idea, something that actually has a consumer application. And we have two contestants in this category. The first is Fin6. Um, they have a very tiny, the tiniest really, 65 watt laptop adapter. And the other one is AirTame. And they have this very neat wireless HDMI screencast dongle. All right. All right. The winner is? <laughs> The winner is AirTame with the wireless HDMI screencast dongle. Congratulations. Congratulations. And here's your trophy, best of CES. Congratulations. Thank you. AirTame is from Denmark. It's a seven people team, and it's really cool what they're doing, especially with so little people. It's pretty exciting for, for a seven person startup from Denmark to come all the way here to CES and win. I think it's great. And yeah. Shows that innovation has no borders. Definitely. Uh, I think it's a great, great thing. Um, our second category is digital health and fitness. That's a category that has just amazingly blown up. At this point, something like 75% of all Americans have some kind of electronic fitness device. Most of them are pedometers, but increasingly, they are much more complex health, fitness, wearable devices and we've seen a lot of them here at CES, and there are some really exciting innovations in that field. Um, the finalists in this category are the LG LifeBand Touch. That's um, LG's wristband. It's also got smartwatch functionality, and it's like many of the other new fitness devices here, multifunctional device that is coming to the US market. Our second finalist is the Sleep Number X12 Smart Bed. And that is a bed with fitness functionality that includes being able to track your sleep habits. And it also has a unique snore stop function that essentially allows you to raise the head of your sleeping partner to stop them from snoring. I think everyone wants to try that one out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, our third nominee is the Razer Nabu. And that... <laughs> Some Razer here, people, maybe? I think so. <laughs> um, and that is... Razer is a fitness device. Razer is a company best known for gaming products, and this is their first foray into the fitness field. And finally, the Jaybird Rain, that is a, a, a fitness device also that has some unique capabilities, including reminding you when it's time to take a break, time to stop working out, or when you quite, haven't quite worked out enough. And the winner is, Winner is the Jaybird Rain. Congratulations. Congratulations. Awesome. Our next category is automotive electronics products. 
If you've been at CES for more than a few hours, you've seen an amazing array of automotive products, everything from self-driving cars to alternative fuel vehicles to vehicles that have amazing interactive features from just about every car manufacturer, domestic and foreign. Our nominees in this category are BMW Active Assist. This is a new technology from BMW that's being shown here in one of their prototype vehicles that has the potential to dramatically make cars safer by assisting drivers preemptively based on road, road conditions. Second one is the Chevrolet Corvette Performance Data Recorder. This is a unique recording system that is available next year on a new Corvette model and will actually allow detailed tracking of performance, including audio and video that you can watch on a heads-up display and then save for review later. Third finalist in this category is the Cobra Jump Pack, which is one of the smallest and most portable batteries around that allows you to jump start your vehicle. If you've ever been stuck somewhere and have had a giant bulky jump starter or nothing at all, it's a great option if you need to be able to get your car going again. And it has USB ports so that you can plug in your other devices and charge them as well. And the final finalist in this category is Hyundai Blue Link, which is Hyundai's interactive system that provides voice alerts and prompts, roadside assistance, mapping, and navigation services. And the winner is... the Corvette Performance Data Recorder. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. This is a really crazy product. I mean, you have to be really hardcore into automotive, into yeah. racing. But for but those people, it's so cool. Yeah. I mean, it's all the data you could ever want. Well, if you buy a Corvette, then you probably are interested in that. It might be a reason to buy yeah, a Corvette. It just too. might be. All right, moving on. Next, we have best audio product. And this can encompass a lot of different things. We have some home theater type devices in here as well as standalone audio products. The first of which is the Aston Kern AK240. This is an insane, insane PMP, a portable media player. It's just, it's like the Virtu, if you know that company, the really expensive right, smartphone is. maker. It's just so expensive and so well made, um, and also very high quality specs in terms of what audio files are looking for. Up next is LG's Soundplate. It has a 3D Blu-ray player built in and it's also very sleek looking. Samsung also has a sound bar that goes under your TV, which is very sleek and cool. And finally, we have the Clearview Clio. It's a see-through speaker, which uses some technology to distribute sound waves 360 degrees. So you'll hear it equally on both sides of the room, which is pretty neat, and it looks awesome. Yeah, I mean, and it's see-through. Yeah, you won't see it, exactly. Yeah, you, can hear it you everywhere. just see the bottom. Yeah. It's pretty neat. All right, the winner is? Clearview Clio. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. Congratulations. From audio, we move on to video. And I think that um, just by glancing around, you can see that video is one of the major themes of CES this year and every year. This year, we've seen you know, hundreds of ultra high def TVs. We've seen lots of new services for those TVs. And we've seen some impressive innovations that will drive the way people enjoy home entertainment for years to come. The nominees in this category are from Dish Virtual Joey. This is a platform that essentially allows you to get your satellite TV signal just about anywhere using software and select TVs. Um, saves you from having to run wires all over your home and allows you to essentially get all of the same services you would without having to have separate boxes that are connected to every TV. Second is the Sharp Aquos Quatron, which is one of the better standard high definition TVs here in a room filled with Ultra HD. Most people are still buying HD sets and this is one of the better ones we've seen. Third finalist is the LG 7070-inch 77 77-inch 77 curved OLED set. Um, if you've seen it in action, then you probably realize that it's unlike anything you've seen before. Um, this is actually a TV that can go from curved to straight. 
and it is an ultra high def TV. And finally, the Samsung U9000 series, another of the wonderful ultra high def TVs that are on display here at CES. Also curved, I believe. Also right? curved, yeah. that's right. That's so a big trend here. Yeah. And the winner is. The Dish Virtual Joey. No one from Dish would be here, to, could, could make it here tonight. We'll be accepting the trophy on their behalf and making sure they receive it. Next category is best software. Although CES is known primarily as a hardware show and Engadget is known primarily as a hardware site, software is increasingly important to the way everything works. As more and more products have similar features, software can be a key differentiator, and that is in everything from smartphones to smart TVs. Our nominees tonight, LG WebOS for TVs. LG has taken the WebOS system, once considered something that would never have a life, and turned it into an operating system for smart TVs, providing a great user interface and experience, unlike what you typically see on every smart TV out there. The second finalist in the category is Sony PlayStation Now. Sony is taking online gaming, cloud-based gaming, again a concept that a lot of people thought was never going to take off, and has created a new platform that actually works and works well. And the winner is... Sony PlayStation Now. Afraid no one from Sony could make it. Um, one casualty of doing this obviously during CES, the companies are at their booths still and um, we will accept this on Sony's behalf and make sure they get it. No one gets to take home the trophy today anyway, so <laughs> nothing lost. All right, next up is best emerging technology, which in some ways kind of is the broadest category we have because there's so many different ways to interpret that. It's obviously something that's kind of on the brink of becoming the new standard. And we have a really diverse selection of finalists here. The first is Oculus Rift, which it's really something you need to see, to believe, to experience. True. It's a gaming headset, but it really puts you in the world of the game. It tracks your body, your head. It's just like being, it's virtual reality to the extreme. And it has other applications as well that make it just really compelling. Intel also has something really cool. We're seeing a ton of wearables, obviously, at the show. And it has a new SD card-sized development board called Edison, which will power a lot of those. And Intel is really becoming the front runner in this wearable space, which I think is a good person to have behind yeah. it. Oh, I, good I agree. Yes, that is. And finally, we have the Avagant Glyph, which is similar to Oculus, and then it only in that it's a headset that you wear but it actually projects images onto your retina, which is really crazy. Um, so it's more for watching movies than playing a game, but pretty awesome and unique as well. So the winner is... Oculus Rift and their Crystal Co. prototype. Uh, you know what we're okay. going to say. Yep. We're um, taking it from them. We will accept this on behalf of <laughs> Oculus and um, hope that they will um, be around um, to hand it off to them at some point this week. <laughs> um, our next category is best mobile technology. I think that um, it's no secret to anyone that mobile is becoming, has become sort of the driving force of the technology industry. About 40 to 50 percent of every dollar spent on consumer electronics is spent on smartphones and tablets. They remain one of the major sources of innovation and one of the real success stories of the past several years. Our nominees are the Samsung Galaxy Note 12 12.2. This is a 12.2 inch tablet that has a lot of the same features of some of Samsung's smaller tablets, but has a lot of advanced productivity features designed to take advantage of all that extra screen real estate, including the ability to have four windows on the screen at once to multitask on your tablet. The next finalist is Leno Lenovo ThinkPad 8. This is one of the newer Windows 8 tablets. And like Windows 8 tablets, like, many, like all Windows 8 tablets, this allows you to run both 
tablets, app, sty app style functionality using the Windows 8 interface as well as traditional performance applications and office applications. Our third finalist is the Sony Xperia Z1 Compact. This is a compact phone with all the features of a full-size flagship. Um, it's one of the better Sony Android phones and like Sony's full-size Android phones, is waterproof. And the best of CES winner for the best mobile camp category is the Sony Xperia Z1 Compact. Hi, congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. This isn't really a mobile show, but it's cool that there's still some really unique yeah, products yeah, here. Yeah, I, I think there were some really good mobile products here. Yeah. CES may not be known as a gaming show, but that doesn't mean there aren't some great gaming products introduced here. And this week we saw some really exciting ones and a wide range of gaming products that um, really cover a, a lot of different categories. Um, our first finalist in this category are the Steam Machines from Valve. Valve has partnered with a number of PC manufacturers to create an, a great range of products that run its Steam OS and essentially reinvent the gaming PC. These are PCs that come in all form factors and at prices from about $500 all the way up to several thousand. Second finalist is Sony PlayStation Now. This is their second nomination tonight and, in this, and they are now in the gaming category. Third finalist, Oculus Rift Crystal Cove Prototype, um, which we just mentioned is the um, winner for Best Emerging Technology. And finally, the fourth finalist in this category is Razer Project Christine, a unique modular PC that you can upgrade by basically pulling out various panels and slotting in new ones. And the winner is... Valve, Steam Machines. And accepting the trophy Mom. on behalf of Valve. Thank you. As long as I'm still holding the trophy now, I would just like to point out this is um, a 3D printed trophy, which is somewhat unique. Um, it was designed for us by um, Engadget head of product, Ryan Block, and printed out by 3D Systems, whose printers um, are on display. Um, it's really, you know, something that um, is really special. It's something that we think exemplifies some of the best and most creative things you can do with technology and was inspired by the idea of unboxing electronic products. So, outer box, the award inside, and inscribed on the back, a statement from pioneering computer scientist Alan Kay, the best way to predict the future is to invent it. Very cool. All right. So we're moving to another one of those categories that can mean a lot of things. Best offbeat product. This could be anything from something that just doesn't quite fit in any other category to something that is just really kind of not mainstream and flat out weird. That's so, pretty cool stuff. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So the first that we have is Mother, which is this device that works with these different sensors called cookies. We all kind of think that's really creepy, the whole mother cookies thing. <laughs> it's so, supposed to replace your mother is how they frame it. But these sensors are really useful in that you can put them on a door if you're not at home and you want to know if someone's opening your door or something like that. It's, it has that utility it's, it's, in addition to having glowing good. eyes and looking like a Russian doll. Yeah, it's a little bizarre, but it actually is practical. Yeah, yeah, and you have these four cookies that it comes with that you can repurpose, so it's not right. like you can only use one sensor for one thing. Next up is Parrot Jumping Sumo, which, if you know Parrot, they make some really cool robots, and this one jumps up to two feet, about. And finally, we have the True Grip Keyboard. It is a keyboard dock in that sense that you can dock your phone in, and it's a hardware keyboard with a QWERTY layout that you can use. It's portable, but it's better than an on-screen keyboard on your phone. All right. The winner is Mother. <laughs> and the 
and accept, we'll accept on behalf of mother. I think everyone's tired and just See, called it a day or called it a CES or, or already. In some cases, these are, these are small companies and they may only have one or two people here. And that too. We understand if they need to stay at their booths. Yeah. <laughs> um, our next category is best kid-friendly product. Um, kids are becoming major users of consumer electronics and technology. Um, it's now not unusual for kids as young as eight or nine to have cell phones and increasingly for them to demand smartphones. Um, so a lot of new technology is not just for kids, but actually technology that is for parents to be able to take advantage of a lot of the technology and, di and gadgets that are out there and provide services that help them with their families. And our nominees here include a range of products both targeted to kids and parents. The first finalist is the Fuhu DreamWorks Dream Tab. This is a customized kid-friendly Android tablet. It's done in conjunction with DreamWorks and has a lot of unique content that is only available on this tablet. Again, designed for kids, ruggedized with parental controls. Second finalist in this category is the Colibri Smart Toothbrush. This is an internet-connected toothbrush. You can track it on your smartphone. Adults can use this too, but what makes it great for parents is not only do you know if your kids have brushed their teeth, but you know how well they've brushed. It forms essentially a map of the inside of their mouth and, perform and provides data and metrics to your smartphone so you'll know how your kids brushed, how well they've brushed, and how frequently. And finally, the REST products Mimo Baby, which is being exhibited here by Intel, which is a smart baby onesie. This is a onesie with a built-in sensor that allows you to track things like your child's breathing habits and other, other um, essentially other bodily functions while your child is sleeping. And the winner for best of CES in the category of kid-friendly product is Mimo Baby. I think we all really like the idea of a connected onesie. I mean, that just sounds it's, really cool. It, it's but, pretty intriguing. Yeah. And, you know, people use baby monitors that have to sort of, you know, be sitting on a dresser or whatever. It's great to have something that's attached to the oh, baby. Oh, hi. Congratulations. <laughs> Glad you made it. <laughs> Congratulations. No worries. Thank you so much. Yeah, the cool thing about it is it's not just a really cool outdoor idea, but it's also very useful, especially for parents with very young I, I think so, and, yeah. and it, it, it actually works. These are, you know, cutting-edge sensors, and it's the kind of thing that doesn't require any kind of intrusive wires or, you know, cameras or anything. It just naturally attaches to the onesie and doesn't really affect, you know, the baby's comfort, apparently. Right. All right, next up we have best maker-friendly technology. And this year, for all intents and purposes, that category means best 3D printer. We have three 3D printers up for the award. The first is really cool, the 3D Systems Chef Jet. It 3D prints food, which is just awesome. You can 3D print sugar, any kind of food. It, it's great. I mean, it's not really meant for you and me. It's meant for chefs, for high-end restaurants. But I would want to go to a restaurant that use that. I, I think that's really awesome. I'm pretty excited about it. And next up, we have the 3D Systems iSense, which is a sensor that you clip onto your iPad. And 3D Systems actually had a Windows version of this really small sensor before. So now it's coming to the iPad to Mac. So that's great. And finally, we have the MakerBot Replicator Desktop 3D Printer, which is an improvement over MakerBot's last version, which was very good, too. This has more connected features. It's easier to know when you need to change out a cartridge. It will alert you if you're out of the room, if something's done. So it's just more connected. and. Definitely an improvement from the last one. And the winner is the MakerBot Replicator Desktop 3D Printer, the fifth generation, by the way. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. OK, our next category, and um, this is um, one of the last categories before we get to the big ones. But um, our next category is uh, best PC. And um, this is the best desktop or laptop machine. Obviously, um, there's been um, a lot of innovation in the PC industry. And it's an industry that, at this point, is um, 
looking to reinvent itself as people continually switch to things like tablets to do a lot of their computing. And here at CES, we've seen a lot of creative concepts for PCs, and it's encouraging to see that um, companies are continuing to push the envelope when it comes to, to developing new PCs. The finalists are Razer Project Christine. And um, <laughs> as I mentioned before, this is a unique modular PC concept with um, basically a number of pull-out components if you need to change the GPU, if you need to change the hard drive, it's as easy as essentially swapping out one piece for another. And it looks great. The Samsung ATIV Book 9, um, that is a um, nine inch convertible, which is in a fast growing category for PCs. Um, we've seen a lot of these smaller PCs and it's an area that is continuing to grow with the growth of Windows 8 and its touchscreen functionalities. Our third is the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Carbon, and that follows up on Lenovo's earlier Carbons, and again, is a, is a great PC running on Windows 8. And finally, the LG Chromebase All-in-One. Um, if you've seen Chromebooks, then you know all about the Chrome operating system. This is an all-in-one that has a lot of the stylish functionality and appearance of many other of the big desktop all-in-ones, but runs the Chrome OS, making it a maintenance-free option for anyone who's looking for a convenient desktop solution. And the winner is... Razer, Project Christine. Congratulations. Congratulations. And now the moment you've all been waiting for. Um, the best of the best award. This is the best product based on everything we've seen here at CES. We, and I said earlier, we have looked at thousands of products over the past week. We've deliberated about which of these are the best. Best of the best represents essentially what we've seen as a product that combines innovation, usability, marketability, something that we believe will come to market in a way that can really impact consumers in a big way, um, and design. So when we've been considering these products, those are factors we've looked at. Everything that we see here, and especially the best of the best product, has to really meet all of those, of those criteria. Has to be an innovative product that does something unique and different, and does it better than anything else. Has to be well designed, something that really is going to meet a lot of those criteria for consumers who want something that looks and feels great has to be something that people will buy, and it has to work the way it's promised by the manufacturer. And I, I think, you know, everything we've seen tonight as a finalist has met all of those criteria. Definitely. So, without further ado, I would like to announce the winner for Best of the Best Award for CES 2014, and the winner is the Oculus Rift Crystal Cove Prototype. Definitely very cool. Like I said before, it's really something you need to try. If you can try it out here before the show ends, definitely do. Yes, and I'm, I'm sorry that no one from Oculus VR could join us on the stage tonight. Um, I encourage everybody to take a look at this unique product. It really is one of those things that is difficult to describe, but once you've used it, you will get immediately how this is sort of a, a quantum leap above a lot of technology today and can potentially revolutionize not just the gaming industry, but a lot of other industries that are going to start using it for things like telepresence and various other functions. Um, the, found, the founder of Razer was on our stage earlier this week and had a lot of great things to say about the company and its experience in this field. And we congratulate Oculus VR on winning the best of the best for CES 2014. All right, last up is our People's Choice Award, which was open to our Engadget readers for the last 24 hours or so. They voted, and the winner was very clear with almost 50% of the vote, I believe. Um, Landslide. Yes. Um, so the winner for this was Razor's Nabu. It's a, come on up. 
It's one of the wearables we mentioned. Congratulations. It has two small Thank screens, so most wearables currently only have one. It also is going to someday have some gamification tie-ins, which will be really cool, and it makes sense given. Yes, yes, yes. you can say something. Thank you. And I'd like to say that the People's Choice Award is great. Um, we, we had um, over um, 40 products listed based on the finalists in all of our categories and had um, tens of thousands of our readers um, vote on these products just over the past 24 hours. Yeah. So we're, we're really excited that so many of our readers got to vote on this and do absolutely want to congratulate Razor on, on winning this award. Definitely. So. I'd like to thank everybody. This has been amazing, and um, would like to thank the editors of Engadget for you know really working hard and um, dealing with me and dealing with um, lots of endless debates and lots of um, products that we had to go through over the course of the past week. Everyone's been really patient and awesome, so <laughs> definitely right. thanks and to everyone. Would like to thank the Consumer Electronics Association. Um, it's been great working with them, and we're very excited about the opportunity to continue working with them for Best of CES for years to come. Again, would like to thank 3D Systems and Ryan Block for our amazing trophy. And would like to thank the rest of the Engadget team that has really helped us work here over the past week, um, including our business development manager, Barb Dibwad, and somewhere around here, Kim Murphy, who's been running the stage. So, and thank all of you for joining us tonight. And enjoy the rest of CES, and make sure to check out all of the great products that we've shown you this evening. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.